Let us pray. Lord, thank you for the story of Mary and Martha and for the insight that is offered through it to us in our lives here today. May we open ourselves up to your spirit at this time, Lord, so that we may know how we stay focused on you and how we grow as your disciples. In Christ's name, we all say together, amen. Amen. This morning, church, we are finishing up the sermon series that we've been doing, a story worth telling, is we take a look at one of the stories of Mary and Martha. Have you ever noticed how easy it can be to get distracted at times? I mean, have you noticed that before? I mean, one area that I have noticed that it seems like distractions have exponentially increased over the years is driving. Amen? Just inside your car alone, there are a number of distractions. You know, there's the selection of music, right? So that can involve seeking a station to listen to on AM or FM radio, or maybe we have XM or, or Sirius radio with their hundreds of choices. Or it can involve searching through our cassette tape or CD collection. You know, the other day, Faith asked me, Daddy, what are cassette tapes? <laughs> I said, oh, that's something we used to have when dinosaurs still roamed the earth. Don't worry about cassette tapes. They're not coming back anytime soon. <laughs> now, if we have our phones with us in the car, they can also be a distraction as we hear the notifications going off that a text or an email has just been sent. There are also a number of distractions outside of the car. And we can get distracted by other drivers, by billboards, or even by the scenery around us. A couple of weeks ago, I was in South Dakota to officiate a wedding for one of my sister's friends. And of course, it fell during the week of the Sturgis motorcycle rally. Now, praise the Lord, it wasn't the 75th like it was last year where they had over a million people in that area, but there are still quite a few people there. And if you have ever been in the Black Hills during the rally, then you know firsthand just how many distractions there can be at any given time. The dress code, or lack thereof, <laughs> has gotten to the point that when we're driving through that area and I spot something that I don't want my kids to see, I'll say, kids, heads down, until I tell you it's okay to look up again. <laughs> Which, of course, just causes them to look around frantically for whoever or whatever I don't want them to see before they put their heads down. Normally, I'm pretty good about spotting those situations before my kids do. But on the way up there between Sundance and Spearfish, I found myself zoning out because I was distracted by thinking about some of the tasks that I needed to get accomplished before the end of that day. I snapped out of it as we were passing a couple bikers and Faye said, ew, gross, look at that lady's vest. I was wondering, well, what could possibly be wrong with this lady's vest? So I asked her, what's, what's wrong with her vest, sweetie? Faye said, she only has a vest on and it's not even buttoned up. <laughs> heads down, heads down. <laughs> Distractions can be anywhere and everywhere. In the scripture that Marvin read for us, we find that Martha was distracted by her many tasks. And in verse 40, it makes it clear that she is, is busy. She's got some things going on. But it's so easy in this story to make it out for Martha to be the bad one. We, we get a little too black and white at times with, with those stories, and it's easy for us to draw this dichotomy between Martha and her sister, Mary. When we know that Martha is busy preparing things while Mary is sitting at the Lord's feet listening to what he is saying. And so at a surface level reading, it sounds like Martha is doing busy work while Mary is listening to Jesus. But in reality, Martha is providing diakonia, which is the Greek word in our passage that means hospitality. In this context, providing diakonia means to care for one's guest, especially through providing a meal. Martha represents a number of people who played an important role in the early spread of the gospel. Those who entertained and gave hospitality to traveling missionaries such as Jesus provided and enabled an opportunity for the word to take root in a new location. And those people often became patrons or patronesses of house churches as well. 
with this ministry came a certain kind of influence in the life of those house churches. Now, another person besides Martha that, that we read about that holds this kind of position is Lydia in Acts chapter 16. Make no mistake about it, what Martha is doing is important. It's vital to the spread of the gospel. Where she seems to go wrong is by letting those important tasks become more important than spending time with Jesus. She also gets distracted by worrying about what Mary is doing. She's annoyed that her sister isn't helping her, so she seeks reinforcement from Jesus. And Martha asks Jesus, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. Martha seems to already know that Jesus cares and cares about her because she answers her own question by saying, tell her then to help me. In other words, I know you care, Jesus, so tell this lazy sister of mine to get up and help me out here. Jesus says, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. I don't know about you, but I'd like to know what happens next. How does the story end? Does Martha get angry and continue preparing the meal, or does she take the time to slow down and sit at Jesus' feet and listen to what he is saying? We don't know. And this isn't the only story in Luke's gospel where we don't get quite a full ending. And it's not the only story where someone is distracted and upset by a sibling's actions. Last week, as we talked about the prodigal son, we stopped reading at verse 24 in chapter 15. But if we were to pick things up in verse 25, we would read a story that doesn't end necessarily the way we would expect it to end. And it doesn't tell us really what happens next. So let's pick up that story in Luke chapter 15, starting at verse 25, and it'll be on the screen. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf because he got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him, but he answered his father, listen, for all these years I've been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command, yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when the son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you, have all, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. So we have two similar situations with Martha and the older son where both of them are upset at what's going on and they're distracted from seeing what is truly more important in the situation. Like Martha and the older son, it is easy for us to get distracted by many things that keep us from focusing on the more important things in life. As we've talked about before, we know technology, it can be a blessing, it can also be a huge distraction. And I was sharing with you back in January after going to a marketing seminar, how current research says that we spend an average of 11 hours a day online. If you're like me, I didn't really think that could be possible, but then when I started to think about it, I thought, well, yeah, the internet is probably the most accessible it's been ever. And I was thinking, you know, even in my office, I will keep Pandora on in the background if it's not something where I really need to concentrate or I might play even Pandora at home. And we always have that cell phone with us, right? Day and night, unfortunately at night sometimes too, makes it a little bit harder to sleep or to get good rest. The next time that you're in a restaurant church, I want you to look at the other tables because my guess is that you're gonna see multiple tables that look a little something like this. And I'm guilty of that. Chris and I, we try to get in at least one date night a month, and we use that time to, to connect and talk with each other. And we were on one of those date nights not too long ago, 
And both of us were pretty tired. I don't think either of us necessarily wanted to be out that night, but we had it on the calendar, and we know how important it is for us. And we started out discussing, you know, the common things. How was your day? What all was going on? And then after we ordered dinner, I noticed something changed. I can't even tell you how it happened, but once the waitress left, we both got on our phones. And it finally dawned on me, we shouldn't be on our phones. We should be talking with each other. And so we try to keep that boundary that the only way we'll look at our phones is if the kids need something or there's some kind of emergency. Otherwise, those phones are too much of a distraction. Our fears and doubts can be a distraction as well. Have you ever been so filled with fear in your life that you didn't know if you could move forward? You didn't know if you'd go left or right, forward, backward. You just weren't sure what to do. There was a big decision that you needed to make. And we can get so filled with the fear of failing in some way that we don't move. What we'll do is we'll be stuck. We won't move at all. Our doubt can be just as debilitating. Our self-doubt can be especially harmful. When we start to doubt how God sees us, we're in trouble. That is to say, when we start to doubt our worth or our value in God's eyes, we get distracted from the truth of God's unconditional love for us. We get distracted from the truth of being created in the image of God. One final distraction I want to mention this morning, there are thousands, but one I want to mention is what we read about with Martha. We can easily get distracted by worrying about what others are doing. Now, we're all guilty of that at times. But have you ever known someone whose life mission seemed to be knowing everyone else's business? Have you known that person? I'm not even going to say a first name because we record the sermon. <laughs> and Upton is way too small of a town. But when I was growing up, I, I knew a, a lady who could tell you anything and everything about pretty much anyone in town. All she had to do was ask, and sometimes you didn't even have to ask, and she would let you know. In fact, she would call up my mom at times and, and give my exact speed as I was driving down her road. He's, Laura, he's going 24, and it's only a 25. You better talk to him. I don't know if she had a radar gun or what, but she seemed to know. And so Upton's a small place. Often what I would do to mess with her is drive down her street five miles an hour to see if she would call my mom just for, just for fun. <laughs> when we are worried about what other people are doing, we miss out on living our own lives. We miss out on maximizing the moments of our own lives. Going back to our scripture, what we find is that Jesus empowers Mary to stay focused on him. Now, in a patriarchal society, in a society dominated by men, we might expect Jesus to agree with Martha and tell Mary to help out because that's her expected role. But Jesus doesn't do that. Instead, Jesus affirms Mary's decision to lay all distractions to the side and listen to him. The better part that Jesus talks about when Martha is trying to get her sister to help is staying focused on him. The better part is spending time with Jesus. That is what's going to help them grow. That is what is going to help them thrive and, and feed them. When that same way, Jesus empowers us to stay focused on him. And we all have tasks that we're gonna have to accomplish, things that we need to get done. That's just the way it is, that's how life goes. The catch is to be on guard that we don't let those tasks, even the really important ones, become more important than staying focused on Jesus and spending time with him. I love the summertime. Anyone else love summer here this morning? There's so much to do. We live in such a great area. We can go over to Yellowstone. We can go to the Black Hills. We can stay here, go to the mountain, go out to the lake. There's a lot to do. We are truly blessed. The problem is that because our great weather lasts for such a short period of time, that we try to fit in six months' worth of activities into three months. And in doing so, we can get distracted from growing in our relationship with God and growing as disciples. So with that in mind, I want to challenge us as we get ready to approach fall kickoff to make sure that we are staying focused on Jesus and spending time with him. How do we do that? Well, like Mary, we listen to what he is saying. And we do that by making sure that we're reading our Bibles each and every day. 
We do that by spending time in prayer and meditation on a daily basis. We, we do that by joining a small group of some kind and having people that will keep us accountable. We do that also by serving others. Luke's gospel, more than any other gospel, makes it clear that while it's certainly important to hear Jesus' words, it's equally, if not more important, to act on them, to act on them as well. And those are the things, church, that are going to help feed us that are gonna help us to grow and thrive. So starting on September 11th, that's our kickoff Sunday this year, we're gonna begin a new sermon series that focuses on kind of our mission statement, at least a facet of that, which is to celebrate, connect, and serve Christ from the heart of Casper. And during that month, starting on the 11th, we're not gonna do it just one Sunday, throughout the month, we're gonna talk about those areas of ministry from celebrate, connect, and serve, and how we can plug into them, how we all can be active in ministry. All of that starts by making sure we're fully committed to growing as disciples. I pray today that it would be so. Thanks be to God, amen.